Hello, Seattle Public School mathematicians. My name is Marcy Shepard Shaw, and I will be bringing you this week's fourth and fifth grade lessons. In fourth grade, we will be understanding the concept of area, how to count it and find it using a formula. We're going to use estimation to help us find the areas for irregular shapes. In fifth grade, we will be adding decimals using what we know about a link between denominators of fractions and lining up place value in decimals. I work at a school in West Seattle called Sanislo. I want to give a quick shout out to my third and fifth grade mathematicians. I'm really excited to be bringing you this week's lessons. I hope we all learn a lot. Um, I'm teaching from my home. I hope you're staying home and being safe. And I look forward to seeing you soon. And this fall, we're going to start the 2020-2021 year. So let's get ready for it. I know all of you scholars are ready to learn. And uh, let's get started. In today's lesson, we will find area. <clears throat> area is the total number of square units needed to cover a two-dimensional space. Dimensions are directions. And in our model, we have directions that show height and directions that show width. These can also be described as length and width, or height and length. In the first model, I'm going to show you that we can just count square units. We can say one, two, three, and we write that as three units squared. In this case, we use units because we haven't described a length or a size. We might say three meters squared or three yards squared. Oops, YD. This exponent shows us that we are measuring two directions. In the second model, we can use what we know about arrays to which have rows and columns to say right now we have one row of three and we can calculate area with a formula. We can say one times three or one row of three is the same as or equals three units squared. Either way, I can calculate or count to find area. I'm going to give you a moment to try one by yourself in the next slide. You'll need a piece of paper and a pencil. Ask yourself as you do this next area by yourself, is it faster to count square units or to calculate square units? Good luck. Okay, fourth graders, we're going to find the area of this rectangle. Remember, I showed you two different strategies to find area. One way to find area is to count each individual square. Another way is to calculate the length times the width. As you find the area for this rectangle, notice which is more efficient or is faster for you, counting each square or calculating with an equation. I'll give you a few minutes, seconds to try. Okay, hopefully you found the area of this rectangle. If you haven't, work along with me. If you notice on this side, there is four rows. Rows go clear across each rectangle. And in th the case of this rectangle, there are nine in each row. I can create an equation just like I do in an array. I have four rows of nine, which equals 30 six units squared. I could count each square, but for me, that would take much longer. 
but it's a strategy that always works. So if that's your strategy, go ahead and use it and continue to practice your multiples. Each row has nine, so I can use what I know about multiples of nine and count each row. Nine, 18, 27, 36. Either of those ways allow me to find area. Mathematicians, this is an example from your packet. You get your packet at seattlepublicschools.org. You can download your packet and then either work along with me or you can solve them with your family or at your own pace. If we look at the pictures, we can see that each row has the same number of squares and we can create an equation to solve for area. One of this week's activities you will get to do is called the Malt Dice Blockout. In this game, players will take turns rolling dice and drawing arrays and filling in, filling in the area, labeling it. At the end, you will add up your areas. The person with the greatest area wins. There's lots of different variations so play this game and it will help you to understand area and arrays much, much better. And also you'll get to have a really good time. Have fun. Hi, I'm Harrison. I'm Max. And today's fourth grade game is the malt dice block out. In this week's packet, there's a grid, <laughs> a piece of grid paper. Players get one point for each rectangle they make. Players take turns rolling three dice on their turn. You will make an array with these numbers. One side of the, array, of the array is the sum of two of the dice. The other side of the array is the sum multiplied by the third dice. You will draw your rectangle with these dimensions. After you draw your rectangles, the rectangle with your factors, put your initials in the rectangle along with the product or area. The game is over when you cannot make any more rectangles and you add up the points. Max and I will show you a few rounds. You will need your block out board, a pen, and three dice. I rolled a six, a five, and a one. I'm going to add the six and the one. Six plus one is seven. Seven times five is 30. You sure about that product? 7 times 5 is 35. Now draw your array. And I'm going to fill it. 7 times 5 is 35. Harrison, you draw along the line. You don't draw in the middle of them. <laughs> That's all right. Keep going. And then count the blocks down, Harrison. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So, 34, did, 35. so did you get the same answer? Yes, yes, you did. My turn. My okay. turn. So uh, Harrison, you forgot two. to, wait, Max, Harrison forgot to put his initials in the box and his product oh, or okay. area. Oh, that's nice of you, Max. Thank you. Oh, and I used the whiteboard. H, H. And, uh, mine, and don't forget the product, I Max. Got a Max, two. you need to put the oh, product yeah. in there. Product was three. I got a two, a two, and a six. I'm going to add the six and the two together which is eight, six plus two is eight, and then times two, six plus two times two, so eight times two is 16. Um, I go down one, and then go over six. Wait, no, that doesn't add up. 
I go down six. One. Okay, look at your equation and see how far to go down. Go down six. No. Nope. Look at two, your. Go down two. Go down eight. eight. So you can't go down. You can't eight. go down. So eight. just go down two and then do it. Make it eight long. Eight. Eight long. Oops. Both, both rows will have to have two in it, Max. So you're going to have to go two by eight the whole That's, way. Show oh, them. yeah. There you go. Good job. Okay, so then you would put and your I initials. Have my initials, M, P, and then my factor, 16. Okay, and your my product. product. Your turn. I got four, two, and four. 4 plus 2 is 6, times 4 is 24. You didn't do it right. You, go down you did do it right. No, uh, I I'm wondering if you just don't have enough room on your six. grid. No, I go over 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, yeah, you're, okay, so okay. you might have discovered you don't have enough room I for that array. I don't have enough room. I think that means that he, that I don't get any points this round. So yes. That's, 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 that's what happens when the grid is too big. I Sometimes have a don't. six, a three, and a five. Sometimes I'm going to do five plus three is eight. So five, three, and it's then. That's okay. I noticed that. Six. So we're going to worry about it later. Okay. And that is eight times six, 48. Very good. So what's your area? So my area is oh. 48. Do you so have enough room on your board for 48? I think so. No, because I didn't no, have room yeah. for 24. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so max. 35 max. and 16. Now you can add all of your products to see who wins. As you can see, he got 16 and I got 35. We only got one product each, which means that 35 is equal to 16. Good, Good game. game. 35 is not equal to 16. I, I managed but... <laughs> I, I managed to <laughs> But good job. Now you grab a partner and start to play Demolt Dice Blockout. Don't go Hawks. Thank you for watching. Go Hawks. This week we're using what we know about place value and addition strategies to add numbers that include decimals. One way to do this is by looking at pictures. In the picture in number problem one, we can see there is one whole hundred, which we would write as one whole. Let me turn on my pen. We would write that as one whole. And then we go on to tenths, hundreds, and thousands. I put my decimal right after my whole number. And then I have two tenths, three hundredths and six thousandths. We read this number as one and two hundred thirty six thousandths. I'm going to add that to my next picture, which is one and I don't have any tenths in this number. So I put a zero in the tenths place and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the hundredths. I don't have any thousandths in my second part of my equation either. So now I'm going to solve for my sum. Six thousandths is six thousandths. Three hundredths plus seven hundredths is ten hundredths. I need to regroup ten hundredths as one tenth. One tenth plus two tenths is three tenths. I bring my decimal straight down and then I add my whole numbers. One, one plus one, one is two. My sum is two and 306 
thousands. Go ahead and try the next problems with pictures on your own. Know that you can get the packets for this week's lesson on seattlepublicschools.org. If you're unable to print these packets, no worries. Just practice the problems on a piece of paper using a pencil at home. Good luck. Keep practicing. This is what's going to get us ready for sixth grade math. In today's fifth grade lesson, we are going to use what we know about adding and subtracting whole numbers, fractional numbers, and place value to help us add, use addition equations involving decimals. The, a decimal is the place that separates whole numbers from parts of whole numbers. I'm going to give you a couple examples of how to add numbers involving decimals while keeping in mind each place value. In the first example, I'm going to have one ten, two ones, and three tenths and four hundredths. We read this number as 12 and 34 hundredths. Right? The number I'm going to add to it is three ones and four tenths and six hundredths. We read that number as three and 46 hundredths. But my equal sign in my as I create an equation. I notice I don't have any thousandths, so I move on to the hundredths. First, I add my hundredths. Four and six hundredths is ten hundredths. I can't put a ten in the hundredths, so I place a zero here, and I regroup my ten hundredths to one tenth. Now I have one tenth three tenths and four tenths, which is eight tenths. I don't have to regroup anything, but my decimal remains. 80 hundredths is still less than one. Now I move on to my ones. Two ones and three ones is five ones. Don't have to regroup anything. The five can stay. And then one ten is one tenth. So now I know 12 and 34 hundredths plus 3 and 46 hundredths is equals 15 and 80 hundredths. I'm going to give you another example and let you try one for yourself. Make sure you have a pen and paper, and then we'll go over the examples in this week's packet with, uh, from seattlepublicschools.org. Okay, fifth grade mathematicians, I want to remind you that one tool I'm using is a place value chart. It always can help when we're adding decimals and all numbers, really. It helps us to make sure that one digit goes in one place, and in that place it has a specific value. So for your first number, I'm going to give you three thousandths, three thousandths, one hundredth, two tenths and then I'm going to give you two ones, one ten and two hundredths. We read this number as 212 and 213 thousandths. The end tells us the decimal is there. In the second number, I'm going to give you four tenths six ones and seven tenths, zero hundredths and seven thousandths. We read this number as 46 and 707 thousandths. When we add numbers, we make sure to smart start at the smallest place value. In the case of this, these numbers, it's the thousandths place. In the thousandths, I have three thousandths plus seven thousandths. Three and seven make 10. 
I can't put 10 in one place, so I put a zero in my thousandths, regroup my 10 thousandths to one one hundredth, and then add. One one hundredth plus another hundredth is two hundredths. I don't have to regroup anything, it can stay there. So I move to my tenths. Two tenths plus seven tenths is nine tenths. My decimal, again, stays right where it is, so I move it straight down and then move on to my ones. Six ones plus two ones is eight ones. Four tens plus one ten is five tens. Two hundreds is two hundreds. So my sum is 258 and 920 thousandths. As we add numbers, if we keep each place where it belongs, regroup when we need to, and remember to bring our decimal straight down, we can keep all of our numbers organized and use what we know about addition to add each place. Hi, fourth and fifth grade mathematicians. I just wanted to tell you what a great honor it has been to try and teach these fourth and fifth grade lessons. I hope they were helpful. The learning curve for me was steep. Um, I am a classroom teacher who's learning to be an online teacher. I miss you all so much. Don't forget all the terrific resources we have at seattleschools.org. There's students and family portals. There's um, information about schools. There's a calendar. There's information for your families. There's websites for you to practice. Um, and there's lots and lots and lots of information that's critical for us moving forward for the rest of this school year and on to next year in 2020-2021. I look forward to seeing what's going to happen. Um, and I hope we're all in the same space together. And if we're not, we're going to keep doing the best that we can and knowing that the future is you and we're all going to have to keep learning together. Thanks, Seattle Schools. Bye.